here. So I'm so glad you all came to celebrate with us and to explore and open open to receiving what you want in your life and in your relationships. It's a great topic. I think that it lives in the human heart, this desire to be with a partner and to have our life enhanced here on the earth. And it's also vulnerable because it's not something we can control. But we've learned a lot that we want to share with you tonight about our relationship, but also we've helped hundreds of couples uh, find relationship that's deeply fulfilling. So we've learned some things along the way that you may find that fit for you when you hear them. So we're here tonight to just discover and share openly. Yes, we've learned a lot through our mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Past relationships. Gavin and I are celebrating one year. One together. year together. Oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We met a little over one year ago today, and we're getting married in September. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is so near and dear to our heart. It's the first time we've really had a public presentation on consciously dating. However, we have facilitated singles retreats together, bringing together spiritual singles in Mount Shasta and inviting people to explore their heart's desires, and then also get some skills and some tools and hope to continue to say yes to that deep prayer and to believe it's possible, which is really our intention tonight in a mini version in the 90 minutes we have mm -hmm. to share our story and through our story be able to just kind of highlight some key aspects and um, lessons learned, if you will. And then also, uh, facilitate your own personal discovery. And that's why there's the clipboards. So as, as Nikki said, we're gonna leave some time at the end, ho hopefully some healthy time for questions and answers. So what we thought we would do is hand out some three by five cards that you could have with you. So if while we're talking, you go, I have this question, oh, there's my question, and you wanna write it down, we'll collect those, and that can be part of what we answer at the end of the evening. Because our intention is to support each of you in finding something of value here. So capture your questions. And you can ask us any question you want. We'll be as open as we can. This um, is also a wonderful way to ask an anonymous question, if that feels more comfortable. Because it is vulnerable. Talking yeah. about dating, it's really vulnerable because it's, it's a risk-taking proposal to actually say I want this and to go through the exploration with different people to see if you can find or mm. be found in, in a compatible relationship. So you can have anonymous questions and I'm thinking if there's a bunch of questions, we're doing this event online in a month and anything we don't answer, we'll make sure to answer mm. at that event online. So um, you can catch the replay or join us for that event too. So we'll share our story and some of the stories we've worked with other people and their experiences in this terrain. This terrain is equally valuable, not just for the dating process. Once you get in a relationship, my perspective, it's the dating process. It's all about courtship and it's all about how do we know ourselves and how do we know our partner and how do we build intimacy. I was talking to someone today and I was, I'm astonished that an arena that means so much to us, which is a partner, that may just enhance our life immeasurably, is something we're not taught anything about in elementary, mm -hmm. junior high, high school, college, virtually nothing. And if anything, we learned about relationship by watching our own families, and they weren't trained. So they taught us what not to do, but that's the only thing they taught us. So we carry it on. It's, it's, it's a fierce territory. It's, um, it's sad territory, but so we just feel a calling to say, gosh, we've learned some things, let's pass them along. And it's really great to see so many of you turn out tonight. I feel like we're also really blessed and we, we're, we're so in gratitude all the time that we have found each other and share so much together. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's, it, it really, it, it, it's funny because it is only a year and um, my life has changed so much since being with Gavin. I, he brings out the best in me and my friends who've known me before know me now 
just continually comment, you're just softer. You're just so much softer, Joy. Mm. I'm so much more relaxed. <laughs> and I'm, because he sees my potential and nourishes it so much, I'm becoming it. And I want that for everyone. Mm. I really do. So that's why this is a topic that I love. I love talking about. And I just, small addition, there's the potential, but I think it's essential that we love who people are and who they're becoming. I love who you are. I see who you are. I've always seen who you are, and I also see who you're becoming. And you treat me like a gym. I, like, Did I've you never say been gym or gym? Gem? Gem. Okay. Gem. <laughs> <laughs> well. Ask us anything, anything. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, let's tell our story. <laughs> All, right. All right, so we met one year ago. We met online on spiritualsingles.com. Mm. It's the site that we've, we've been drawn to because it's people who have a little bit more of an orientation of evolution and growth. Um, and, but I lived up t in, in Lake Stevens, 10 hours north of here, mm -hmm. uh, above Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a, been dating for four years looking for the right woman. Um, and I finally had to expand my circle of where I was looking because for me to expect that my partner would necessarily live down the street was you know, absurd. <laughs> so I dated somebody at one point from Austria and you know so but my prayer was really strong was that I had a knowing there was a there's a partner here that could fundamentally just shift my life across the board inwardly and outwardly professionally and um, and I was told I had a prayer to spirit, the way I talk to spirit and the invisible, just saying, God, I'm just looking for this. Can you help me? And the message I got back, we're working on it. You know? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes these things take time, but we're getting close. But it took four years, and it was about a year ago that I reached out to you. Right, because right. I, um, I had ended a relationship and the 1st of January that had been, and maybe some of you can relate, a good relationship, but not having the same vision of what we wanted in our lives. So, so there tended to be this rub in areas of non-compatibility. And I had the courage to say, there's something else that I know is in store for me. And some of that came from just like you, an inner knowing, an inner knowing and also getting visions of this and feelings of this and wanting this, not knowing this would be Gavin. Mm. So I gave myself a beautiful, um, a beautiful window of healing before I felt ready to go online. I gave myself time to decompress, to grieve, to move through some of the resentment of, and regrets some of the, the grieving of what I thought it could be and how long I stayed hoping it would be what I wanted it to be, um, and some anger. And, and, I, and I very consciously walked through that. Um, I can't say that I was at some perfected place, but at one point, about five months along that journey, I really heard, you're ready, honey, you're ready. And not only are you ready, this, this man, has been waiting for you. <laughs> and I'm very intuitive. I tend to be pretty somatic. So for me, I, um, I can sense things. And I sensed he lived to the north. <laughs> I actually, when I tuned in, I felt he lived to the north. I got nudged to go online. And I went online uh, early May. And yeah. you sent me it, a beautiful in less than one month. overture. Yes. Boom. Yeah. yeah, and I sent Enter her an overture. <laughs> I was just really moved by her profile. and She read it. She wrote it very authentically and deeply, and mm. I was so moved, and I just wrote her. And then we started, and we haven't stopped since, you know. So then about, what, three weeks later, I came down, and we were going to spend five days together, and we spent 12 days together, <laughs> you know. Um, and from the very early on, there was this sense not only of a profound love, but there was a compatibility it just worked. Compa we'll talk about it tonight. Compatibility is such a key ingredient. I'm sure you've had the experience of loving someone very deeply, but it, it doesn't work very well. So it's even more painful. Mm -hmm. So, but we had the compatibility, and we also shared 
doing and loving this work. And here we are now starting to talk about love and how to bring in love and how to deepen in one's own self-love. So we're working together a lot. The three weeks that we had before we met physically were so crucial. And any of you who are open to a long distance relationship, one of the benefits is you're kind of forced into these conversations, mm -hmm. right? So there isn't the physical touch and affection right away, which really helped us establish so deeply our friendship, mm. our transparency, our honesty with each other. And it started in beautiful written form, and then it moved to voice memos <laughs> on the phone, which we, by the way, have kept and yeah. are, are really We're in the middle of going through those a year later. Yeah, we're having re our first year anniversary yeah. and, and, and re-listening to our very first dialogues with each other. And then we decided to do our Zoom call and um, continued that until we decided to be in person. But, but the leading up to the even saying, I'm gonna invest the time and for Gavin the drive as yeah. well to meet in person, we, we, we made sure that we talked about and shared some of the most important aspects of our lives and what we were looking for in a relationship. And we did that very early on, which I loved. I loved that. Time. <laughs> One of the things that I loved that you were willing to do was talk about past relationships. Mm -hmm. Some women are not. Mm -hmm. Some men are not. But you know, my take was, and I think you shared it was, that ground, even if it was painful and didn't work long term, was where so much learning took place. So much of my journey took place. Mm -hmm. So I'm convinced at this point, because I've been married twice and won 25 years, love her dearly, still love her, but you know we weren't to continue, surprisingly so. And then a second marriage was where I made a lot of mistakes. I was fumbling around. I was making false conclusions. I was not rising. I was struggling because th I think that's how we learn. And I'm now of the, of the impression that all of that prepared me for you and us. And it's to be appreciated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. despite its pain and its fumbling, but it's not a failure, it's learning. Mm -hmm. and I think it's important, it's one of our things we wanna pass along is, can we view it that way? Can we harvest what we've gone through without making a case against ourselves or someone else and say, I'm here to learn, Earth is a school. So we both did that, and we've been very open about all that. We took some bold risks, I think, Starting from the beginning, I'm, I'm just, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'll say it this way. <laughs> if you are online and have developed a profile or you're thinking about it, that is the place to start. We're not going to be something for everyone. And the more that I was really clear in my profile what I was looking for and who I am and what my lifestyle was, I'm not trying to be something I'm not. Like, this is the reality. I love my work. Um, I would adore being with a man who loved his work and wants to, and potentially is remote in his work. I just put out my dream. You know, these are the things I value. So we started with that kind of honesty. We knew a lot about each other. And then we just kept going, including, today we were listening to one of the voice memos that I left Gavin about, and it was called, what was it called? Something about sharing my insecurities. It was two days before he was coming. And I just wanted him to know as excited I was and how close we had already gotten through our conversations that there was some insecurity arising. And um, we're both turned on by realness, whether it's about love, <laughs> whether it's love or fear, or if someone risks, like when someone says to me, there's something I'm scared to tell you, but I want to tell you. Inside of me, I go, wow. I'm about to be blessed because they're willing to show me what's real. And that's why I've been a therapist all these years. I mean, that's, that's, that's been my, my gig. I grew up where I was in a real troubled family in my teens. My brother was a murderer and my sister was a heroin addict. And I struggled through that. The good news is it catapulted me towards psychology and spirituality. It opened up my entire life. But it was hard. It was hard, but 
Um, but I was drawn to psychology where a sensitive man like me could talk about what was really going on and be welcomed. Thank God I found, I stumbled myself that way and had good teachers that invited me that way. So, um, did you say you're, we're the kind of people who get turned on by, by sharing vulnerabilities? Yeah. Yeah. So by the time he's driving down from Seattle, we're both pretty turned on. Where we really were. Yeah. And we met in person on June 23rd yeah. in Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I happened to fall in love with Mount Shasta. I'd always driven by and seen the beautiful mountain. Oh, yeah. Never mm -hmm. gotten off the freeway. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I'm so in love with Mount Shasta. <laughs> <laughs> I got Joy. I got Mount Shasta. I got all of your friends, all of your heartfelt friends. It's like I was welcomed immediately into a heartfelt community. My whole life changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everything that Spirit said, like it's going to just change your life. It's true. There's so much more here. So we, we really started wondering, it's like, well, how is it that we were for, so fortunate? Is this good luck? Is, did we have anything to do with this? Or is this just the luck of the draw? And we realized because we both worked helping people create successful long-term re relationships, there are core ingredients that allow for a long-term, healthy, loving relationship. There's, they're very fundamental at least as we've discovered them. And while a relationship you might have along those lines may look different than ours, the core ingredients to making it truly fulfilling will be the same, and we want to share some of those with you tonight. And they are love, pure love for each other and self, a dedication to truth with self, self-honesty and the other, compatibility, we're going to unpack that a bit further. And then the fourth one is psychological maturity. Mm -hmm. Each person coming, owning, and taking responsibility for their own growth. Mm -hmm. so it, go ahead. It's been quite clear to me for a while that there's two purposes for intimacy and human relationship. Committed relationship is an extraordinary avenue for joyfully creating life together and sharing it. And a committed relationship also serves the purpose of surfacing unresolved issues from our past for each partner. I've worked with couples, married couples, unmarried couples for 40 years. This is the thing that they trip up on. They'll get triggered and upset in the relationship and they'll start blaming and they don't realize that the relationship triggers something that they brought into the relationship before they even met the person they're with. And if they don't understand that and know how to work with that, they'll start making the other person an enemy. They'll, they'll start not being vulnerable. They won't be honest. And it's because we're not taught it. We don't really understand what's going on. So we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. So we'll start with love. And, um, and this, is, this is the kind of pure love that doesn't have conditions. So essential, but is love enough? Love's not enough. That's why we want to talk about these other three. Love's not enough, because I can love someone, but not have the kind of relationship with the same vision that they have for a life. And so that doesn't work in isolation. But is love the most important component? I would say, yeah. Love is patient, love is kind, love is natural. Mm. I mean, it was really natural to love this man. It was, it was, and I do feel like when we, we get the Cupid arrow and we feel that love for another person, there's a reason, there's something that's really coming alive inside of us. And to love and accept Gavin has been my absolute delight. It's the easiest thing in the world. And I believe that my capacity to love others, especially unconditionally, has everything to do with my journey inside me. So I felt really fulfilled in my life I loved myself, even my mistakes, especially my mistakes. Loving myself in my insecurity, loving myself in my imperfection, loving myself as I am, loving my life, feeling love, being in love, not looking for love, not trying to fall in love. I'm already in love, I am, I am in love. I am that. 
And that made it just, and does make it just so exquisite to mm. find someone else who has that same level of capacity and bounty in themselves to be able to loop it, to give and receive. Mm. And, and that's a key, because it's not just about giving love. It's like, what capacity do we each have to receive love? In fact, one of the, I'm having a women's retreat this, um, this fall in Mount Shasta, and the theme is receive, receive receive. Mm. To be receptive to love is how to warm up to inviting mm -hmm. a relationship in your life. To start receiving love right now from yourself and from the air and from the environment. Yeah, I like that you're, you're nodding your head. You know the key. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Do you want to say anything else about love? It's loving from deep inside out. And it's the relationship will also show you, show each partner places inside themselves that we have not yet loved. Maybe that we've judged. Maybe that we're not comfortable with or ashamed. I remember a story about love when we first got together. I got up to Mount Shasta. We decided to go for a hike. She comes into my room where I've got this suitcase and she goes, so did you bring your shorts? Right at that moment, I knew I had a choice how I was going to be in this relationship because I knew that I did not bring shorts. <laughs> and I did not bring shorts because since I was this high, I judged my legs as white and ugly. And I covered them up and did not wear shorts. And my back was turned to her and I went, here we go. And I went, the kind of relationship I want, I want to be able to just be real with her. And I said, look, I don't know how you're going to respond to this, but no, I don't have shorts. And I told her why. And it was, aside from even her response, it was liberating that I took that choice because I could have deftly hidden that because I've done it my whole life. And I really did, I was not in favor of my white thin legs. I was not. So that's shifted from that moment on, because she treasured my legs. And I've come to discover my legs are actually strong and beautiful. I mean, I made this up a long time ago, and I was still running it. But she welcomed my vulnerability. And I, you know, that was a, that was a milestone. And she's done the same with me. She goes, here's one that I haven't loved. And it was so easy, like I'm saying, so easy to just love that he shared that mm -hmm. and love his legs, which we did. A lot of yeah. loving yeah. your legs. Yeah. And then we went to town and bought some shorts. <laughs> I, by the time I left, I had eight, eight five pairs of shorts. And I, li and I like wearing shorts now. And I'm in my late 60s. And, love. You know, this is what love can do. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is what love can do. I mean, and that's do. just one example. That's, that's part of what we do. <laughs> and it's to have the safety to be able to risk, again, even independent of how the person responds, because then I've let it out. You know, I've, I've taken it away from the shame category. So, so essential number one, love. For a yeah. healthy relationship, love. Yeah. All the facets of love. Number two is being devoted to truth. Living a life where you really want to be truthful with yourself, with other people. I don't mean where we're arrogant and we tell everybody around us what the truthful thing, like you don't like them or things, but there's a deeper underlying search, a seeking for self-knowledge and truth and awareness because it opens up freedom. So the finding of wisdom that works and finding fellow friends, teachers that can teach us that. We're both, we love consciousness, we love truth, we love discovery, we love doing this work it's our life. And so to have it be the heart of our relationship is a, is a glorious thing. So. That ability to know thyself, to thine own self be true, and to communicate it with love and compassion to other people, that also is an important practice in all <coughs> our relationships. Mm. And, and then to, to have a healthy, long-standing relationship, there aren't withholds. We share our vulnerabilities. We request. We ask for what we want. We inquire within. I know I had made a very deep vow to myself that I'm living in congruence with my values. 
that's why my profile was so clear. I think I just even said that. In yeah. my, you know, this is what's important to me. I'm committed to my spiritual evolution and other things, my health, my vitality, and integrity with self. So um, we continue. We continue to be bold and take risks and tell each other what we need, what we want. Yeah. Yeah, that moment when I decided to tell her the truth about my legs was, I mean, that's, I know it's a funny story, but it's like you can imagine the freedom inside of me after decades. Now I wear shorts. I mean, I used to wear pants when it was hot. It was terrible, right? It was just terrible. Oh my God. So really, the, the freedom of being able to have an inner experience and have that congruent with your outer expression called integrity, the love, these, these intertwine with each other. The love flows when that happens. If I'd, have, if I'd have played a game with her, I'd have started down a road that I've already been down with other women. I didn't want to do that. Um, so. And being with, um, in the dating process and just being in that place of truth from the very beginning. Vulnerable. It's, it's very vulnerable, yeah. but it very quickly, it's easy to see if the one in front of you is able to have or that level of truth as well, that mm -hmm. level of honesty and self-revelation re re with, um, with communication. So yeah. helpful in the dating process. Stay true to self and be true to the other. Preferences, asks, The requests. tricky thing about that is we can't control the other person when we're getting to know them. We can't control the whether you'll stay together. <laughs> the temptation is to present what they want to hear so they'll stay. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, listening to this, we all know that's the fallacy of that. It's absurd because then you can't be yourself. And if they love you, then they love what your, your caricature. So the vulnerability is the relationship could end at any time. And in those four years that I dated, easily 15, 20 times, I'd get together with someone, we'd start to share caring, we might move deeply. And then one or both of us would, would sense it's not aligned. And that's not easy on the ego. It's, you want to be loved because I have this prayer. I want a partner. But you have to be truthful and say, this, you know, th this isn't a match. So even the truthfulness about it not being a match, if it can be shared honorably, it's not about rejecting someone. It's just saying, you know, I, I don't sense we're on the same page. And, uh, and I could sense that that might be hard for someone because they really liked me. But what do I do? I have to tell them. I tell them as honorably as I can. Um, so, we're saying this throughout the evening, this whole territory, dating, being in relationship, it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable. There's no avoiding that. And typically, a definition of a healthy relationship or success is they get along all the time. I've never met a couple that gets all along all the time. We don't get along all the time. Um, it's, what do we do when there's a challenge? Can we use those challenges to grow closer to each other? And I think, I think we can. I think we can. Particularly if both are dedicated to pure love and, and being devoted to the truth. Yeah, yeah. Then comes compatibility. So for a healthy long-term relationship, I mean, yes, love, yes, truth, but are you compatible? and compatible in kind of foundational areas. Uh, the first being friend, then lover, spiritual ally, and domestic or partner. Are you compatible in these areas? And um, maybe we'll talk about each of them a little bit, but one thing in, in when people ask the question, am I, am I with the right person? You know, am I with the right person? How do you know if you're with the right person? Right. Usually there's going to be like, if you were to evaluate these compatibilities, it's a seven, eight, nine, or a 10, like on a scale from one to 10, it's natural. It works. It, it, that creates such a fulfillment. I know for us, because we're so compatible, like crazy compatible, so compatible, by the way, we have to tell them about our Vedic astrology, okay. you know, right. I was right. going there, right? Okay. Maybe. Some of you might be familiar with Vedic astrology. There's a compatibility index, mm -hmm. bringing the, the two charts score when you look at the two charts together. Yeah. So 36 is the highest and anything 18 or above is considered really compatible. And so in arranged marriages in, in the Vedic tradition, you'd want an 18 or higher. 
We scored a 36 oh. out of 36. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And we were told that six months into our relationship. The cool thing about that was what they were telling us, we were experiencing. We said, mm -hmm. we, we, that's what we're doing. It would say, this, this for you two would look like this and this and this. And we go, that's, what, that's what's happening here. It was very validating, but we also feel very fortunate. Yeah. But we've also learned a lot about ourselves in terms of who we are, what we want, what we put in our profile, how we checked each other out. Um, the great thing about online dating to me is that you can learn, you can learn a great deal about someone. Um, and you can, at least for me, you can sense if there's a genuineness in what they're sharing. For, in a, so it's uh, compared to the old days of just meeting someone on the street or in the library or in a bookstore, you can learn a lot. Um, it, it really helps you move along. At least you know that you're somewhat in the ballpark. And if, and if you aren't online and dating and meet someone who's not online, Looking at what those questions are and what's put on a profile make for a very good conversation or two or three. Yeah. You know? I mean, those are all important. What do you want in a relationship? Um, what do you value? There's, there's so many online dating sites. Like we said, we love spiritual singles um, just yeah. because it's pretty extensive. So compatibility, here we are with our 36, which we are super blessed to have. Um, and and this is kind of, I want to say, raise the bar, right? So a lot of people settle. A lot of people settle for a little bit less than what they want. I did. Yeah, I did in the past too. And somehow, I think we both really, we wanted something really profound that was playful and easy and we did get that, you know, so. So the compatibility, the seven, eight, nines and tens as a friend, meaning Playmates, like we just enjoy the same activities, you know, and that's a great thing to find out in dating, you know, want to go for a walk, want to go bowling, what do you like to do? Um, and then the second is um, as a lover, are you chemist, is there chemistry there? Um, one of the things we did even before we met is we, we got online and did the erotic blueprint. And if you're not familiar with that, it's a great conversation starter. It's a great know thyself about your own erotic blueprint but sensual also sensual preferences yeah sensual sexual kinky energetic shapeshifter mm -hmm. are the blueprints mm -hmm. and to be able to have a conversation with the potential partner well what what is your blueprint what you know and then to actually are we compatible are we sensually and sexually compatible mm -hmm. that's a you know in an intimate relationship um worth exploring <laughs> and the third um spiritual ally is this a, a, a mate, a soul mate? Mm -hmm. Not that there's only one, but is this someone that I can grow spiritually with, that there's enough congruence in our consciousness and our understanding of life and the world around it and spirit? That's our foundation. And then life partner compatibility, shared vision, going to bed early, waking up, yeah. Early, which we yeah. had compatible, sharing a similar diet, wanting the same things in our life, treating money respectfully and in a lot of ways similarly, those kinds of compatibilities. They want to create the same life together. Yeah. Yeah. So the fourth core ingredient or essential for a long-term successful loving relationship as we're seeing it is psychological maturity. Mm -hmm. It's a dedication to evolution. Uh, because again, then challenges in the relationship can be used for each partner to grow. Old issues can surface, legs, you name it. They, <laughs> they can get healed and actually set aside. Uh, so the relationship becomes an altar. Again, that takes vulnerability. It's so easy, because I did marriage counseling and have for years. Couples love to be able to blame their partner for their disturbance inside. All it creates is distance and, a, and tremendous pain and disappointment. So the willingness to say, like for me, in this relationship, I heard a quote once that I really love. It said, if you want to find a great partner, let go of your fear. If you want to keep one, let go of your ego. Mm -hmm. And I do that 
with joy. I trust her enough that when I'm scared and I see my ego operating, I go to her and I go, look, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I just did. I'm aware of it. It's one of my patterns. I can see it. I know it. I'm sorry. And I tell her and she receives it and we go down the road versus me, you know, digging in, having a, an opinion or being upset with her, or blaming it on her, which goes nowhere. I mean, marriage counseling, I tell couples at the beginning that we're not going to do any blaming. If that happens, I'm going to stop it because it's just totally destructive. There's no learning that takes place. There's no safety that takes place. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to be with a partner who says, yes, I'm human and I am incomplete and I can show you all the reasons why, but I'm working on them. And I see they play out with us. I'm working on that because I don't want to do that to you and I'm working on that. So it's a wonderful thing to have. And you do that in spades. Yeah. You have from the do. beginning. We do. Yeah. We, we came into this relationship with some maturity and yeah. probably also um, mm. when the triggers did start popping, because they do, mm -hmm. we knew that that was what was supposed to happen, meant to happen, and we're, we're welcoming them because that's the opportunity There's to... The to just polish ourselves and mm. let more of the ego go and have self-discovery. Right. And on the other side of that, I, I semi brought it up earlier, but in that then, also being able to make requests and asks, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. just, there are times when maybe there's something that triggers and oh, it's mine. It has nothing to do with Gavin, I can recognize. And there are other times when I get triggered, I own it. And then I might come back and have a have a request. Yeah. And, uh, when we do that again, can we do it a different way? Would that work for you? Of course. <laughs> so, do you want to talk about getting clear? Yeah. Want to say We're, anything? Because we gave you guys a little journal things. That, does everybody have a journal that mm -hmm. if you want one? Yeah, you have get it? one. Okay, you I think get behind, one? there's some paper, hopefully. Nikki's there's there. one. Or we can create one. <laughs> Mm. Maybe a pen and a phone. Oh, I have a notebook. A notebook. Yes, there you go. You Perfect. Yes. I'll pull that out. All right. Okay. All right. So we wanted to also make this. Because um, you've heard us talk. Yeah. Now we're going to ask you to write some things down of some things that that are true for you about this territory that are true for you. And again, we want to emphasize what we're talking about tonight isn't just about the dating process. Once you get in the relationship, you could be here and be in a marriage for 25 years and listening to the things we're saying, and they may strike you and say, now that helps me. That helps my relationship. Well, and I know that there's at least one couple here that's on a date tonight oh. and have been married for how many years, you guys? 31 years. Yeah. There you go. So talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> But this actually, I was thinking of you too. This, these journal prompts, you can bring it to this relationship with right. each other, right. and how like you you keep enhancing your love. I know you do, and play with it tonight too. You guys can be partners. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, automatic writing is the opportunity to be totally spontaneous. This is a time and place where there is no critic, and the pen in hand just flows. So I'm going to offer four prompts and then you can just let yourself write whatever the answers are. You don't have to share this with anyone. Um, we will have an opportunity to partner up afterwards and you can share what you want. But just right now, primarily, this is just for you. And so the first one is how I want to feel how I want to feel in a relationship is how I want to feel. And you'll have one minute to just explore within your own consciousness how I want to feel in a relationship is. Next prompt is how I see myself blossoming in this relationship is. How I see myself 
blossoming in this relationship is. So you notice that these are explorations of self. And so many people, when they talk about dating and attracting or calling in the one, there's a lot of emphasis on who that person is. Mm -hmm. And while those lists are awesome and important and you might have one for yourself, um, how you feel in that relationship can be an even stronger orientation as to if it's the right relationship. So I have two more uh, explorations, and, and, and this one is about the relationship itself. So you'll be exploring what's important to you in this, in this relationship that you seek. So the kind of relationship I want includes, the kind of relationship I want includes, We call these getting clear <laughs> activities. And, and the last one, some of the key characteristics or values I want to see in my partner are. Some of the key characteristics and values I want to see in my partner are. Seemed like everyone had plenty to write. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably do have a lot more that is in those questions. And it's sacred, actually, pretty sacred territory we're in right now. And um, we often say that we each had a prayer. You could also say we each had a heart's calling. We each had a deep desire. And we each had intention. And, and that, so, so do each and every one of you. So, you know, just take a moment and hold that piece of paper and, and recognize um, the potential that's available there and more po possibility of discovery with yourself in, in journaling there. I think one of the most challenging things about if you're not in a relationship but you'd like to be is owning your desire and owning your prayer and getting clear about it because you're not sure if it'll ever happen and it may not happen, but it certainly won't happen if you don't get clear and you don't start putting the word out about it. So what I see most people do is they just take that prayer or that desire and they just put it away. Mm -hmm. They just foreclose any opportunity. So, but it takes courage to come out and say, I have a desire. I mean, you guys are writing about, these are what's important to me. This is the kind of partner I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking to experience. Starting to own the truth of your heart is very powerful. We would not have found each other if both of us didn't do that. There's no way. We both dared, thankfully, you know, we put all of our chips in, and here we are. And our intention is to encourage you to do the same if you're willing to do that and share with you some of the keys for how we found each other. But what we'd like to do now is if you would just, just silently, just turn towards someone who you're willing to be a partner with. Yes. Okay. So, does anybody have anything that they'd like to share from that dyad, that encounter, or anything you wrote in your journal? Just anything you're called to share, like, huh, I saw something, or I learned something, or you have... Anybody have anything you'd like to share with the group? Or you're willing to share. Yay, yay, Deborah. I was surprised at how many different qualities and words and description. Ah, a range. Yeah, such a range. That mm. There was no repetition. It was just mm. more and more and more. Mm. It was heartening for me. Ah. Like Do you mean like there's like, like a rainbow, there's a whole mm -hmm. collection or like a piano keys with all these different parts that have meaning for me. Is that what you mean? That's beautiful. Was that in, in each of the prompts or one in particular? All across everything. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, I 
I'm just surprised that there were that many adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a writer. <laughs> you're a creative, so you can create this. <laughs> that actually is kind of interesting. I do want to just speak to that. That um, being in creative energy is part of creating in life, and being in creative energy with self, with writing, with art, with creating the vision of the relationship, visualizing and experiencing before it happens how it feels, that is the art of manifestation. So keep being creative, keep utilizing that creative energy to create a relationship beyond your wildest dreams. So that's part of what you just inspired me by what you shared. May I ask you a question? So you said it was across all three. So does that mean you also experience yourself as a wide-ranging, very... I really thought of that particularly as the values and the, and the um, characteristics yeah. of the other. Yeah. No, not just that, but that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. one we've been waiting for. <laughs> Become the one you're looking for, right? You know, look at that fourth one and, and, and turn that around. The characteristics and the values that I want to enhance in myself are. A lot of the times we project on the other. We think we want someone to complete us. I know, I know that one so well. I've always loved that saying what you're looking for is looking for you. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of power in that. It does take bold to say, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay, who else? Anybody else like to share? Please. Um, well, I, I really, we're just meeting as friends, and it just, mm -hmm. I'll just see the beauty of my friend. Mm -hmm. The beauty in her, in her wants, and listening to her, uh, her vulnerabilities. Ah, uh, you were moved by her. Mm -hmm. Yes. And listening to my partner sharing, I was really touched by how very genuine um, those needs, wants, and desires were in the beautiful qualities. And I said to her, I wish that for you. Mm -hmm. And after I said it, it was like, oh, I was the universe saying that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish that for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, we are, we are blessing each other by being here together and affirming these with each other. Probably a good idea to continue to share these desires with those people that you know you can have that safety with and receive those blessings. Mm. Hmm. Did you experience her responding in that way? <laughs> yes. She was moved by, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who else want to share? Yeah. So there's probably a lot on my list that would overlap, but I think a couple that really stood out is how important for me it is that she also wants to know or knows she has a part in creating a new earth and that she mm. wants for herself and for the relationship to continue to evolve. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 I think I'm hearing like a shared purpose, a shared ministry that mm. you align in yeah. that yeah. is really Aligned important to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was talking first time with Joy, she said one thing that just rocked me because it matched mine. And she said, I said something like I asked her, are you looking for a relationship that you can build something for the long term? And she said, yes, I am. She was very clear and I was. So that whole dynamic, it's like we were looking to go the long term and own it, just spend everything. And you were, mm -hmm. and I was, and we are. And then you asked me really soon, and he, you, I remember the message, because you're like, this might be presumptuous. Oh, yeah. But, I know what you're you know, I was looking at your website, and you've been looking at my website. Would you ever want to be in a relationship where you shared a ministry? or Facilitated had, had, workshops had, together. Had, you, your words were create a new earth together, but there's some mission that you're both aligned in and work together. Yeah, yeah and yeah, 
And yeah. I said, and this may be too early. And, and she writes back and she said, well, actually, as to your question, the answer is yes, smile. <laughs> and I'm glad you told me what was on your mind. Mm -hmm. So, Anybody else? Yes. Um, in the spirit of vulnerability, thank you yeah. for your big story. Um, I just feel like really touched that I want to be able to show up in a way that I'm not prepared for, mm. kind of, like, I'm really tired of, like, living into some story of who I am, and, and yeah. not, you know, like, there's so much potential to, to discover in the moment, I don't know, mm. um, so I feel like I want to, I wish that for everyone that we can all, if that is interesting to you too, yeah. to, to show up in the moment without, you know, as much as possible without like, I am this or I am that. It's like, who am I? It's like, what is this moment? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Through moment. both of us. Moment, moment. It's all yeah. just showing up moment to moment. Yeah. I think I said to her one point, I said, you know, I think we're going to know whether we're going to be together in the long term if we're together in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> but without trying to press for that, because we didn't know. What I'm also called to share is that who I've become as a man in this relationship, I've never been anywhere close. And I'm, there's a dedication to just being the finest I can possibly be. Not perfect, but just like be the best I can be. It just brings out the very best in me. And uh, so I like who I am here. Um, um, so, thanks for sharing. Yeah. I was I was hearing in what you were sharing, um, being surprised by who you are and what you say, being curious about who you're becoming, and and being natural, being authentic. It, it yeah, that's what I heard. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like not, you know, I'm not like being played by the strings of whatever. All right. Just yeah. What's kind of the right, right. Yeah. Not what I should say or what I think he wants me to say or wants right. to hear, but like what's natural. Mm -hmm. Did you, were you also saying that you want to be with a man who meets you where you are without trying to put you in a box or trying to shape you or really just there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can everyone hear us okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We both okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you want to share? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your hand, even though it wasn't up. I can I see your energy. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, I mean, I, at this time, I'm, like, I'm aware of this thing you're talking about, this third entity that I've never actually been in before, this real communion. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's required of me is something that Gloria Steinem got in the way of, <laughs> which mm -hmm. was being a receptive. Yes. Person soul that is willing to allow a man's presence mm. in. Mm. That I'm so overly confident and capable of getting ah. everything done, and I'm just so capable, and I do all these things, and I'm so capable that I did, I'm, I'm learning how to receive it. Yeah. And what it requires of me to be receptive. Yeah. And how much I long when I think about the conversation I've been in recently is around do we even know, I, mean, I know all my good qualities that society has told me I'm organized and I have integrity and I have this and this and this. It's okay, now what are your feminine qualities? <clears throat> what are your strong feminine qualities? Like, what does the feminine do? It took me some time to really get that. When I am really open, I take the beloved into the mystery. I am the mystery. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is something that I am brought into when there's a strong enough presence around me that I, my feminine mm -hmm. womb of woman awakens and that that's something we are less invited to know about ourselves in this culture. You are so ready. I know. <laughs> oh my God. And you're right. Hallelujah. It does need to be the right man who's a match for you, but you are, you may not have had experience or met him yet, but my goodness, you are just like a, cherry tree ready to blossom so 
I do feel a bit virginal. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in fertile territory right now. I say that because you carry, you do carry the feminine. It's very clear that you do. Mm -hmm. And I do hear you about society and Gloria, but boy. Um, Is it Leela? It's Leela. I'm really glad you brought this up. Uh, maybe it came up for others in how I'm blossoming. I know that that was um, in my in my time alone, in my healing time, as I called it, in my preparation. Mm -hmm. So much of it had to do with learning to be receptive and becoming that. Because I, too, like a lot of us women, have emphasized the masculine. And I'm so grateful that I had created a healthy masculine, evolved masculine in myself, and had an organized life and career and structure. Mm -hmm. And and when that was in place and sustainable is when I really dropped into, even before this guy shows up, right? Opening and opening and opening to the receptiveness of just mm -hmm. being and, and feeling held before he came to be that presence. And, and I, I think I said it earlier, right? People are telling me, wow, you've really softened. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing it. This is on a lot of the hearts of a lot of women. Yeah. I just did an interview with the founder of Spiritual Singles. It'll be up get on, if you want to get on the mailing list. But it's all about exactly that, <laughs> how women are overemphasized so often in the driven and the masculine and how essential it is to balance and mature both qualities and be integrated. You want to see something else? I do, if you don't mind. Yeah. I think that there's a really interesting thing when I'm in the presence of a man who is um, in his masculine, mm -hmm. I just like suddenly over on my other pole without even understanding yeah. how I got yeah. it. And I'm a little like, oh, <laughs> it's so wonderful mm -hmm. to be in the presence of a really strong man. I'm a strong woman. I have a strong presence. Mm -hmm. And so when he's stronger and bigger than me, it's like, oh, I just like uh, become blushing and tender. And it's like, oh, that feels so good. I'm yeah. somehow familiar with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yay! It's like two magnets, you know. Yes, it, really it is. is something. Yeah. And when I'm overly calm, I get these wonderful, gentle, kind men, but they don't bring out the gentleness in me. They make me stronger, and I take control, and I take the lead, and I do all these things. And mm -hmm. So I'm learning. It's a great learning. Yeah. Work. How was that, though, for you, when you say that you've become the man that you are, and just sometimes you talk about... The well, from a masculine and feminine perspective, the most powerful thing that you have going that moves me more than anything else is your feminine receptivity, your ability to surrender, your ability to be let me, us, move you. I just, it makes me be the man that just wants to just be. And that, that man I'm learning can be sensitive and vulnerable, but uh, my response to your femininity is a masculine energy that is noble and protective and s quiet and would do anything for you. Anything. <laughs> and it would... So, so anyway, um, back so, to the, here we are. We're going to You guys got to take a break? No! <laughs> the chakras in the male and female. Yeah. I've been taught that the chakras spin all in one direction, but I've also had the experience of the male chakra turning in the opposite direction, and that's what creates the magnetism. Is Have you had any kind of interaction in that area? I haven't felt it so much in the energy centers or the chakras, but I would say there is a felt sense of the masculine and feminine polarity. Like, I feel mm, less visual, more um, feeling the feminine. It, it, you said it so well. For me, it's, it's just 
it's a uh, receptive open it's opening it's opening and it's receptive it's 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 a flower so I don't really have anything to, much to say about that experience okay yeah well, just yeah I don't have any experience yeah. either that reference points for experience to comment I, it, all of that may be accurate I don't know I just don't have any experience yeah worth if you have those kinds of sensitivities worth exploring yeah Thank you. Yeah. We handed out three by five cards mm -hmm. with any questions. And if you do have any of those, we're going to make some time here. If you could just pass those to us. But we, we do want to open up. We can also accept if you want to just ask questions. But I'll pick up any, any yeah. if anyone has anything yeah. they wrote down. Okay. Cool. So, what's the date of your workshop? Pardon? Your receptivity oh, workshop oh, in boy. Shasta. What's the date? September 6, 7, and 8, okay. and my dear friend Tashina is actually going to be co-facilitating with me. So. And it's <laughs> under, the, under the title of A Woman's Way of Awakening, and it will, the first one will be all about re receptivity. I'm in Alaska. Any other... Uh, and we, we'll, we have another 10 minutes, so we'll do Q&A, and then we will break and be here and, and you know, look forward to having connections with any and all of you. Um, and we do have a sign-up sheet. We do um, some online events together, too. You're invited to join us. But let's do questions first. Do you, thought, do you have one or mm. long? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I think it was recently. So. A woman's way of a awakening. A woman's way of awakening. And she's at joytaylor.com, T-A-Y-L-O-R. And there's a whole page about that event, joytaylor.com. So the first question, have you considered creating a way where the folks who are drawn to this in all different locations can meet one another? In other words, create an introduction site. It would be such a service. So we have a series with Jill Crosby, who's the founder of spiritualsingles.com, that's going to be four evenings in August. And it will be on this theme, conscious dating, saying yes to love. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, it's going to be online. It's two hours, I think, every session. And people will be able to come in from anywhere in the world. That will be a chance to meet people who are in the category of aspiring for a partner. It will involve partner activities that are shorter and yes, breakout rooms. So there'll be some interaction with people. That's one of the ways, but if you have any other ideas, let us know. Yeah, we, the singles retreat that we're doing, which is in late July, is full. We have one spot for men. Right, one spot for men. That's if, right. If you're a man and want to come, let us know. Yeah, the women <laughs> fill it up, and then there's a waiting list, and we try, try to get the men to come in there. That's right. So, but I do hear you about... It would be a service. Have you ever... I don't know who gave me this, but... SpiritualSingles.com is the best site that we have found for meeting people who are, you still have to deal with people who would misrepresent, they don't tell the truth, I mean you have to, you have to sift through with your intuition, but they're the best site I've found and that's how I found you. So. so, second question, when I read a profile carefully, I can see both the overlaps and the places that might make us not work. I am older and busy. Time and energy are precious to me. To not spend that and become disappointed again, I know it is not good, but I want to discuss the thing that might not work right away. Hmm. That approach doesn't go well. <laughs> help, help. <laughs> I would imagine, although I don't know who wrote this, and but... There are things that you're drawn to that do work well, or you wouldn't even be entering into the conversation. So I would start with those, but I sure wouldn't wait long with my question about this. And when you say it doesn't go well, I just want to say, because I dated maybe 30 women or dialogued with, it's like I started to get to the point where when I got together with a woman or we were online, or on Zoom, if for some reason it didn't work, I was thankful. I had my answer. Mm -hmm. This isn't it. 
I go on to the next. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter who. I had a woman who in Victoria, Canada, we got together after dialoguing and then we walked and, and one morning and she, she sat on a bench overlooking a lake and we're ha having a wonderful time and she starts sobbing, mm -hmm. sobbing. And she finally said, I care about you, I like you. But my intuition told me last Saturday, this is not the right thing for me to do. And I overrode it. And I'm crying because I will miss not being able to date you. And I said, thank you for being so truthful. But we had, we had our answer. So I went home and okay, that's not, not that one. I also injured her very much. But if it's not an unequivocal desire on both, there's nowhere to go. More questions uh, in, yeah. yeah. So I'd, uh, I'd love to hear you say a little more about compatibility mm. and especially the uh, bridge between codependent mm -hmm. compatibility, mm -hmm. which produces compromise, superficiality, disempowerment, and interdependence, which leads to empowerment. Because my experience is a lot of relationships are very troubled by a difference in velocity or interest between the two partners. One wants to grow more than the other does. Hmm. So how do couples navigate that difference in interest in going deeper? My take, what you're describing as codependency, compatibility, is not compatibility at all. Yeah. It's dysfunctional, unconscious patterns. Right and they won't sustain themselves for long and there'll be a lot of suffering. So you really have to know yourself enough. I've done codependent behaviors. I've done things that are dysfunctional in relationship and I've had to learn and just say, I don't wanna go there. I'm thankful for all of those that I did because we just don't go there. But I, I don't, it can be the appearance of compatibility that's when you hear people, they say, we get along all the time. There's, boy, that's a red flag. So I don't know if that's helpful, but it's like there's really not, people are not, there's, un, there's withheld communications, there's avoidance of conflict, there's passive aggressive. Those all go with. Well, I, I guess my, the point of my question is that one of the two wants to break out of that. Break out of the superficiality, the codependence, and the other not so much. So why would they stay with the one that doesn't want to break out of it? Well, that's why they split up. Or that's, they just submerge right. it. There's nothing wrong with splitting up. Splitting up is a good thing. Yeah. I work with married couples all the time, and the first thing I tell them is, I don't see it as my job as your therapist to keep you together. Mm -hmm. We can have a safe space. We can talk truthfully, which usually they haven't done, and there's a lot withheld. And I said, the only way you two can stay together is each of you arrive at an unequivocal knowing that you're to be together and you want to work on this. Yeah. Cool. And if that doesn't happen for both, I don't think it's worthwhile to continue. So the compatibility, I would, I would place this in the spiritual ally category if, if it was in any of them, and it's kind of in all of them, but if one is really wanting to go deep, I mean, I just have a very dear girlfriend who just ended a six-year relationship because they were compatible athletically, they were compatible in a lot of interests and romantically and sexually, but the depth and the speed from which she was ready to expand her consciousness and where he was, was not compatible. He'd back away from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't willing or So in a way, I think what I'm saying to you, Will, is I think it's wise to call a spade a spade and be willing to call it. Sometimes calling a spade a spade, the person will move because you're going to be walking away if they don't. It's not an ultimatum. You're just saying what's true for me is I can't stay unless we've got some meat on the bone. And I'm about the meat. And I love you, but I, life's too short. And maybe I'm being too direct. I don't know. Okay. That's refreshing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Yeah. It's so much of um, your relationship work with your, with your counseling. You have that happen all the time when I one do. partner is wanting to grow, yeah. the other one's a little stagnant. 
and they're about to leave unless they do therapy. And because Gavin does, he's a therapist, you know, that's a lot of what you see in your couple's work. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and helping the other person might not know how to grow. But the willingness to, and the love, there's where the love comes in. If someone had the strength of truth to ask for it, it can happen. Yeah, I do have the capability to assist someone who genuinely wants to grow, but they're scared to death. Mm -hmm. um, and the partner usually then hears that, and if they're steadily making progress, and it's sincere, that's a different thing. But they may need an ally in that. You know, it's pretty hard for a couple to work that through. Um, so, is that is that helpful? That's great. Okay. <laughs> Jim. I kind of have an interesting question. I'm curious what you would say. I don't necessarily want this for myself, but I'm curious what you would say about yeah. people who say, you know, you can't get everything from one person. Right. And a man has all these wonderful characteristics that we're matching. I'm not saying this is true, but yeah. we're matching me. You know, maybe I can't expect this of him. Maybe that's a need I need to find elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not one of my top four core values. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you, what do you think about that? I don't think it's a matter of lowering your standards or making a demand that he, a man be everything. I think the mm, most essential mm, directive you want to listen to in that situation is, what does your heart say? Because mm -hmm. you could choose a man that doesn't have three of the things you want, and another man could have all the things you want and something doesn't mm -hmm. move. Yeah. There needs to be something deep in your spirit mm -hmm. that has a calling to invest and dedicate. Yes. That's, that's the compass that will allow all things. Does that make sense? That's it. Totally said. The mind will never compute it. It's just an inner compass, a spiritual yeah. me. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's not an equation where you're measuring variables. No, that's the mind, you know, yeah. We love, we love our other friends that fulfill other aspects of our lives, yeah. too, yeah. of course, yeah. right? Yeah. So important. Yeah. I think there was wait, maybe one more question. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your Vedic astrology and you know, specifically oh, yeah. how that happened. And was it like online or an actual live person face-to-face? Yeah. Face? yeah, I can't. What's his name? Craig. 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 Craig Ridgely in Mount Shasta is a Vedic astrologer for many, many years. And we were just uh, inspired to explore, especially Someone after six months. Someone told us about months. him and the yeah. kind of experience they had from the reading, and we decided to do that. I don't remember all the breakdown, but it has the compatibilities. There's a bunch of arenas they have to do with like health, you know, because Vedic is a system of astrology that includes. Um, it's really integrated into physicality and health and, and daily lifestyle and purpose and just. But we just kept scoring, and we happened to both have Aquarius moons, so you know that in itself is uh, just key. Do you have an Aquarius moon too? Yeah. Right. We'll start a club. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless yeah. it's expensive. Pardon? Expensive. I don't. I think he was like, uh, oh, he has a sliding scale, actually. Yeah, he's yeah. reasonable. He's really reasonable. He's very reasonable, and. We can give you I, that I, if again, that treats you. The, the kind of dynamics that he told us about our relationship wasn't just a score. He told yeah. her, you, a relationship will allow you to surrender to who you are. Mm -hmm. And she is doing that. Mm -hmm. And there's things that I do in this relationship, and I am doing that. So there's a, a harmony in our growth, <coughs> you know, par excellence. Yeah. So yeah. his name's Craig. Ridgely. 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 And if, reach out to us if you can't find it, but he's in Mount Shasta. We'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll place a link on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, wait, there's one question, then another question. Okay. And, then, um, and, then we should, yeah. and then we have a question. I just wanted to respond to the astrology. Yeah. Because um, when Will and I met, there was a, a, a lot of energy for us and a lot of sparks. And I, and I thought he was in Canada and I was living in Maui. And I thought, how could that ever work? Wow. And so she didn't want to move to Canada. <laughs> 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 but 
we did an astrology composite chart as well, and it was very, very helpful for us. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. the guy was just laughing and saying, if that's not enough, you got this and this and this. Mm -hmm. and he just kept going on and on. Yeah. I found it was really helpful because otherwise I would have thought maybe it was just a Venus transit coming through, or you know, you see people have these sparks and then it falls apart. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is life mate partnership. This yeah. is, you'll this help is each other go deeper than you've ever gone before on your own. Mm -hmm. And these are kind of things that are really helpful when you have to do the beginning of a relationship. Yeah. Good tool. Yeah, it was a very helpful tool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, last question. Um, so, I'm going to speak for myself, but I know it speaks for many women. Yeah. Um, that I've been a psychotherapist for 50 years. And counsel singles and couples. And I've been single, um, well, the first five years I was single, I wanted not to date. And then the next six years I've been online, I started with spiritual singles. Mm. And I'm not meeting anybody mm. of this caliber. Yeah. And the men in Ashland, uh -huh. um, there's there's just some kind of, I just haven't met anybody who's got the balance. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I work on myself all the time. Yeah. So I'm just... I, I'm so moved by the love and the skill in both of you mm. and between the two of you. Mm. Um, but I hope I'm speaking for uh, many. Mm -hmm. That uh, yeah. Yeah. well, so in that six years, at this moment now, do you still hold the prayer for a partner to arrive that does hold what yes. you're looking for? Absolutely. I would continue to hold for that, and I do understand you're being honest. You've scoured, you've looked, and it's. And I've heard that before about Ashlyn. It's not the first time. Oh, yeah. But I had to go beyond. They won't. Yeah, you have to I, when I when I reach out to somebody who looks anywhere near compatible, yeah, I get either no response or I don't want to do long distance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you probably are aware that on spiritual singles they ask the question, "Are you willing to relocate?" Yeah. That's one of the questions. Well, I was on that originally. Five, uh, six yeah. Okay. Years ago. Well, but still. All I can tell you is, I, I, it took me four years. It was a long time. You're now talking six. six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have the prayer, mm -hmm. and it's essential to you as something that you sense in this lifetime, Deeply. what choice do you have but to keep looking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and keep praying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. must. Yeah. Even if you don't get it. Yeah. You must, because yeah. if you set that aside, you'll close off a part of your heart that's one of the most sacred there is. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That closed it, or no, that's that sacred. That is yeah, sacred. keep it's keep the keep the longing alive. The longing mm -hmm. is very yes, powerful. I can't help it. I, it's, it's alive. Well, that, yeah, well, yeah. That. and I hear you, and I empathize with you, and please keep going. Yeah, I mean, Don't I guess stop. I would reach out to you to to guide men. Mm -hmm. You know, to open up to the the balance, <laughs> yeah. functioning in the world, yeah. and being spiritual. Yeah. Jill just did Jill Crosby, SpiritualSingles.com. She interviewed me, and it was titled "Online Dating: A Man's Perspective." Mm -hmm. and, I, and I and I was speaking to men. Good. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I think you're right. Yeah. It's not easy to find. Mm -hmm. But if we tell ourselves it's not available, I think we could one, one step too far. And that's what I was going to speak to. Is just it's, it's, I hear a lot of women saying there's no good men out there. Mm -hmm. And let's change the narrative. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good men out there. There's a lot of great guys out there. There really are. And if we can believe that, see that, experience that, and maybe we find one that's great but not for us, affirm it in him like oh, right. it's yeah. really cool like yeah. as sisters to have a friend that's a brother and say you are mm -hmm. such and you are michael such a cool guy i really appreciate your consciousness as a man on the planet right now and the more of us women who can affirm the men that are our friends in our life and, and feel that because um yeah there probably are more there's more women here tonight we have a waiting list of women to our mixed retreat. Spiritual Singles has a lot more women than men on the site. I mean, there's a lot of conscious spiritual women, and there are a lot of great men out there. There are a lot of great men out there. And I only need one. And I only need one. I know we need to close, but when we met, 
she had already been hired by Jill to facilitate last year's okay. Conscious Singles yeah. Singles Retreat in Mount Shasta okay. for singles. Yeah. So, and it was full. She invited me to facilitate. I get here two months after we met. We facilitate together. Yeah. We love facilitating together. All right. What was really cool though is all the people that were there, the 22, men and women, they were all on the other side of the line just like I had been and just like she had been. But we had just crossed the line. Mm -hmm. And they were watching all this. And they, now, they know, we've stayed in touch with them. They know we're, we're so hopefully us being together gives you some encouragement. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks.